a reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person with shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, Stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? But you dishonored the poor. Are not the rich oppressing you? And do they themselves not haul you off to court? Is it not they who blaspheme the noble name that was invoked over you? However, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Brothers and sisters, the discipleship we exercise each day in following Christ requires a revolution in our thinking. We must not think the way the world does or as human beings do as Peter was doing, saying that if you are rejected, if you are vilified, if you are crucified, well, that's bad. This is, must be avoided at all costs. And Jesus says, blessed are you when they hate you. And blessed is he when they hated him, because that is the source of our salvation. Blessed are the poor, the lowly, the rejected, the marginalized, the oppressed. We who work and struggle each day advocate and shout from the rooftops for the rights and the lives of our youngest, most defenseless brothers and sisters, the children in the womb, are indeed living this teaching. Blessed are they 
And blessed are we who understand that when we advocate for the unborn, we will be treated like them. If they are defined out of existence, so will we be. If they are not admitted to the normal life of society or the normal protection given to human beings, then neither will we be. James puts it well in his letter from which we read today, from the second chapter. He talks about these f false distinctions that we make, distinctions based on appearance, shabby clothes that the one person has and fine clothes that the other has. False distinctions in the sense that they don't get to the core of our dignity, of our rights. Love your neighbor as yourself doesn't simply mean love your neighbor to the same extent that you love yourself. The Lord is trying to say, love your neighbor because you recognize your neighbor as a person like yourself, no matter what the differences might be in appearance, in how dependent they are, in how small they are. Love your neighbor because you recognize them as a person like yourself, like yourself in dignity, like yourself in rights, like yourself in being loved by the Lord and worthy of protection. Brothers and sisters, when a group of people are oppressed, they are first, before being violently attacked physically, they are violently attacked verbally, and by putting them in a different category. This has to be done by the oppressor in order for his actions to appear in the least defensible. They will be called names. Professor William Brennan wrote a book some years ago called Dehumanizing the Vulnerable when word games take lives. And he looked at the Holocaust, and he looked at the oppression of our African-American brothers and sisters by slavery. He looked at all kinds of examples of oppression, genocide, Holocaust, and he saw and illustrated how the language comes first. People who are called parasites and human waste. And the unborn, this we do to them today also called parasites, called clumps of cells, tissue, and other dehumanizing language that prepares the groundwork for the dehumanizing actions that we subject them to, like dismemberment and decapitation. Brothers and sisters, uh, the Gospels, Jesus' ministry itself and the words of St. James today tell us, avoid these false distinctions. Think for a minute about what Jesus did. He went to the lepers when everybody, by protocol, was, 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 was avoiding them. He went to uh, the blind man when everyone was telling him, shut up, when he was crying out to Jesus from the roadside. He went over to him, what do you want me to do for you? And he healed him. Zacchaeus was up in a tree. He wasn't expecting any attention from Jesus. He just wanted to see him. And Jesus calls him down and, and, and has a meal with him. He went to eat with the tax collectors and the sinners. And people were astonished at this, including his own disciples. Why are you doing this? What's going on here? You're supposed to avoid these people. He talked with the woman at the well. She was a woman and she was a Samaritan. On both counts, he was supposed to stay away from her. But he didn't. He didn't go along with those false distinctions. He went to the Gentiles, recognized the faith that was present even among them, even though this offended the Jews, he went to where people were. And he said to his apostles, who thought that they were doing the right thing when they said, oh, keep these children away from the master. He's too busy. He can't be bothered with all this nonsense. He said, let the children come to me. He placed his hands on them and he indicated that they indeed are a sign of the very kingdom of God. He eliminated false distinctions. He went right up against the false exclusion and marginalization that the people of his time were 
we're engaged in. And St. Paul picked up on this, of course, and said, in Jesus Christ, there is no slave or free, Greek or Jew or man or woman. All are one in Christ Jesus. Of course, he didn't mean that there aren't real distinctions between those groups. But what he said was, those distinctions are not distinctions in people's dignity. Christ brings all of us together who accept him, all those he created and loved, loves and died for. Brothers and sisters, with Paul we can say indeed, there are no born or unborn. We're in the business of erasing that false distinction in as much as it would deprive the unborn of their rights. Let's live this truth of the gospel, this lesson of James, this marvelous call to indeed love our neighbor, love our unborn neighbor as ourselves. Amen.